to understand yoga, you need to get hold of a good translation of Patanjali, the Yoga Sutra. Uh, I don't know which is the best translation. There are so many of them. It says it starts out, now yoga is explained. Mm -hmm. First verse. And the commentators say now has a special meaning because it follows from something else that you're supposed to know beforehand. That you're supposed to be, in other words, a civilized human being before you start out on yoga. We don't teach yoga to baboons. And so you're supposed to have been disciplined in artha, karma, and dharma. In politics, sensuality, and dharma, justice. And then you can start yoga. Then the next verse is, yogas chitta briti niroda, which means yoga is the cessation of revolutions of the mind. In other words, uh, you can interpret that at many levels. Chitta meaning consciousness, like a pool, like water, like a reflecting pool. If there are waves on that, it doesn't reflect. It breaks up all the reflections. So stop the waves on the mind, and it will reflect reality clearly. Get a perfectly calm mind. That's one meaning of it. Or another meaning of it is stop thinking. Eliminate all contents from the mind, all thoughts, all feelings, all sensations, everything. How will you do that? Well, it goes on to say you do it by certain steps. First of all, pranayama, which means the control of the breath. Pratyahara, which means preliminary concentration. Tarana, a more intense form of concentration. Jhana, which is the same. Jhana is Sanskrit for Zen. And that means profound union between subject and object. And finally, samadhi, which is uh, way out. Now, what's happening here? Control your mind, first of all, by breathing. Breathing is a very strange thing because breathing can be viewed both as an involuntary and as a voluntary action. You can feel I breathe, and yet you can feel it breathes me. And they have all sorts of fancy breathing ways in yoga. They are very amusing to practice, because you can get very high on them. So they set you at these tricks. And, of course, if you are bright, you may begin to realize some things at that point. If you are not very bright, then you'll have to go on. And so next they really get to work on concentration. Concentrate the mind on one point. Now this can be an absolutely fascinating undertaking. I suggest that uh, you try it this way if you want to make experiments. Select a, a highlight on some bright, uh, some polished surface, copper or glass or something, where there's a little tiny reflection, say of a candle or an electric light bulb. Look at it and put your eyes out of focus so that the bright spot appears to be fuzzy. A fuzzy circle. Now look very carefully at the design in the fuzzy circle and see if you can make it out. There is a definite pattern of blur and you can have a wonderful time looking at that. <clears throat> then go back, get your eyes into focus and look at intense light. 
and you can go into it and into it and into it like you know you're falling down a funnel and at the end of that funnel is this intense light and go down go in 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 it's the most thrilling experience then suddenly the guru wakes you up and says what are you doing that for well because i want realization why because we live in a world of uh, if we identify ourselves with the ego we get into trouble we suffer we we're in a mess. He says, are you afraid of that? Yes. So then, all that you're doing to practice yoga is based on fear. You're just escaping, you're running away. How do you think you can get realization through fear? Now, there's one to think about. So you think, well now, I've got to go on with my yoga practice, my concentrations, my exercises, but not for a fearful motive. And you know that guru, you know, he's watching you, and he's a very, very sensitive man, and he knows when you're doing, you know, always knows what your motive is. So he puts you onto the kick of getting a pure motive. And uh, that means very deep control of the emotions. I mustn't have impure thoughts. All right, so you go along and you manage to repress as many impure thoughts as possible, and then one day he asks you, why are you repressing these thoughts? What's your motive for trying to have a pure mind? And you find out that you had an impure motive for trying to have a pure mind, that you did it for the same old reason you started out the thing in the beginning, because you were afraid because you wanted to play, get one up on the universe. And so, uh, eventually, you find out, you see, that your mind is what is called in Sanskrit, uh, mudha, mudha, which means crazy. <laughs> because it can only go in vicious circles. Everything it does to get out of a trap puts it more securely in the trap. Every step in the direction of liberation is a new tie-up. So that you started, you know, with molasses in one hand and feathers in the other. That was the original situation of man. The guru made you put them together, <laughs> see, like that, and said, now pick the feathers off. <laughs> and the more it is, the more of a mess the whole thing gets. So you get involved and involved and involved by this process. And he, in the meantime, you see, has been telling you, yes, you made a little attainment today, but it was only the eighth stage and there are 64 altogether. And you've got to get to that 64th stage. And he knows how to spin it out and uh, drag it all out because you are ever hopeful that you will get that thing, just as you might win a prize, or win a special job, or a great distinction, and be somebody. That's the motivation all along, only it's very spiritual here. It's not for worldly recognition, you want to be recognized by the gods and the angels. But it's the same story on a higher level. So he keeps holding out these baits. And uh, as long as the pupil falls for them, he, he holds out more baits. Until after a while, the pupil gets the realization that what he's doing is running faster and faster in a squirrel cage. That he's making an enormous amount of progress and getting nowhere. Like in Alice Through the Looking Glass, when the queen says, here, you have to ha run faster and faster to stay where you are. And so he impresses this upon you by these methods very thoroughly. And at last you find out that you, as an ego, as what you ordinarily call your mind, are a mess. 
that you, you just can't do this thing. You can't do it by any of the means that have been held out to you. You can concentrate, yes, you've acquired a considerable power of concentration by doing all this, but you find you're doing it for the wrong reason. And there's no way of doing it for the right reason. See, Krishnamurti does this. He's a very, very clever guru.